face a huge number of challenges in making Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. One of the things that we did right at the beginning of the project was to write out kind of a, a list of the rules by which the, uh, the Uncharted world operates. It's very much a game about uh, exploration and discovery. It's kind of larger than life and it has these characters in the world who are often eccentric or surprising. Yeah, well, payback's a bitch. We have challenges in all fronts. It's how do you create a grounded character in a grounded setting, trying to get the pacing right, not only in the story and the cutscenes, but in games, so they actually start playing the way that we're drawing them in the story. They need to look and react that way in the game as well. When we set out to do the sequel, we just wanted to even do better at capturing that active cinematic experience, which is really, for us, capturing the, the, the charm and action and adventure and spirit of, of classic, you know, action adventure that we all love and making it interactive so that anything we could do to make that experience in the player's hands, we wanted to improve from the first game to the second. And I think that's why we get the effect of people not wanting to put the controller down. You know, they want to see what's going to happen next and they're emotionally invested in what the characters are doing. We got a really unique character in Nathan Drake, so we really wanted to delve deeper into the, the character, figure out what makes him tick, and expand the cast of characters to allow him to have a lot of uh, different individuals to uh, play off. Nate, this is Carl Schaefer. How are you feeling? I think within the video game landscape, he stands out. I mean, he's got a real relatable character. He's an everyman, he's fallible. Nate. No, Elena, I'm done. Now, come on, I'm through playing the hero. We knew that we wanted to expand on his character to explore flaws and conflicts without losing what we thought was at the heart of our story, which is humor and charm. Yeah, good luck, pal. I mean, that's almost impossible to... Oh, you did it. Nice. And, you know, there's even elements of romantic comedy, which I think is unusual in games. If it makes you feel any better, my relationship with Flynn is strictly professional. Really? Mostly professional. Oh. True character is defined by the choices a human being makes under pressure. So that's what we try to do with Nate, is throw something at him that just pushes him enough, right, up against the wall that forces him to kind of be cunning and skillful, and then thus become the hero in the story. And that becomes sort of the, the core of the story, is seeing, you know, when people are put in a crisis, their real character comes out. And then how the people he surrounds himself with, his friends and his colleagues, react to the same crises, and uh, what that says about his character. You know, we've got Sullivan and Elena, and a new character, Flynn, who's a longtime partner and associate of his, and, and Chloe Fraser, who's his sort of new romantic interest. I'm sorry, do you have a plan to go along with that grenade? Yes, I do. And all these people sort of are satellites around him that reflect different aspects of his personality and pull them in different directions and and then we want to just see what happens when when the shit hits the fan we can't just leave him here to die he is as good as dead already and so are we if we don't go now <sighs> then go yeah nobody's stopping you Uncharted has, has always been uh, grounded into reality, and we try to thread the fiction and, and reality. We try to push it as much as possible to, to the fantasy, but it's still believable. We've always wanted this very lush and colorful world. We want just, just vibrancy in all of our textures, detail. It's just all about detail, detail, detail. Some of us actually been to the, the Gompas in Nepal and Tibet, and, and we look at the location and the culture and how rich the architecture is and just how they've developed their culture and the colors and the design. And sometimes reality is better than almost anything you can create. The big picture and the details, you can't have one without the other. So we'll do a variety of different types of concept art. We'll start off with sort of the big production paintings that give you the breadth and scope of what the level's supposed to look like. And they'll do tons and tons and tons of pages of, you know, what do the pipes look like? What, is the, what does this look like? When we set out to figure out the stories, we know that we always want to base it on a real-life historical mystery. Our catalyst for this story was a real-life story about Marco Polo, one of the first Westerners to, to travel to, to China as a, as a trader, as a, as a merchant. And the mystery surrounding his return home was what we used as our, as, our, as our launching point. Marco Polo leaves China with 600 passengers and 14 ships loaded down with treasure from Kublai Khan. And he lands in Persia a year and a half later 
with only one ship left and only 18 passengers. So, so somewhere out there, there are 13 ships loaded with the Empress treasure waiting to be found. Yeah, and that is what your client is after. And because we base a lot of our uh, historical backstory on facts, you feel all more grounded. Uh, the Chinamani Stone gave us a nice artifact, something meaty with a real historical context for Drake to pursue. So here we have this artifact that somehow ties into Shangri-La, and that was another grounding for us. A lot of people pay lip service to trying to tell a good story in a video game, but they don't really take the steps necessary to deliver on that promise. And our team really has embraced that challenge. And I think we're providing a level of character-driven plot that most games just uh, aren't capable of, of doing. And we combine that with a really rich gameplay experience that weaves that narrative into the game as you're playing it. And it's just that whole package that we're bringing is what I'm most proud of. But what is it they say? Fortune favors the bold. Right. Lucky me.